despite my utter disdain for modern Sony and their last three overpriced paperweights, I happen to hold the original PlayStation in high regards. See, as I have espoused in previous videos, I am an RPG man, a connoisseur of both digital and tabletop role-playing. And the PS1 era was something of a gilded age for a particular breed of RPGs, those which hail from the land of the rising sun. So, with the weather changing to better suit my personal tastes, and with the best holiday of them all barreling towards us, I figured I would kick off the channel's first Halloween right with a review of not only one of my favorite JRPGs, but one of my favorite games period. The atmospheric, macabre, and utterly unique Kudelka. Legend has it that after Secret of Mana composers Hiroki Kukuda's dream of directing his own game was shot down by Squaresoft's upper management, and after a chance meeting with the then chairman of SNK, he left Square Enix to go into business for himself, with SNK's funding. The studio that he founded, he swiftly dubbed Sakunath, and immediately started development on what would become Kudelka. Besides taking heavy inspiration from gothic horror stories and Welsh folklore, what truly makes Kudelka special is just how far out of its way it goes to buck nearly every trend of late 90s JRPGs, while also blending in aspects of survival horror along with a more western approach to writing and gameplay. Making a game like Kudelka today would be a very difficult job. Back in 1999, it was Olympian. But despite the odds, Kikuta and Saknoth achieved their goal so well that if I hadn't told you Saknoth was a Japanese company, you'd probably mistake Kudelka for an American production. Instead of a sprawling adventure set in a bright high fantasy world, Kudelka instead takes place during a single night in a haunted abbey turned manor in the Welsh countryside on October 30th, 1898. Instead of the usual array of colorful, hyperactive, androgynistic, spiky-haired, big sword-wielding anime rejects as party members, Kudelka instead has three, and each is more damaged and human than the last. We have Edward, a burly East London street rat turned thief. James, a bishop with a tragic past who was on a mission from God. And lastly, we have the eponymous Kudelka herself a sardonic pagan witch who was lured into the haunted halls of Aberystwyth Abbey by the voices of the dead. Our unlikely band of heroes must work together to uncover the mystery behind the abbey and its haunting, and, if they are lucky, make it out alive. One of the few things in Kudelka to escape Kikuta's westernizing hand, much to his and my own regret, was sadly the combat. It's just a simplified tactics combat system, and it also happens to be the weakest and most traditionally JRPG thing about the game. But how do I know Kikuta was the driving force behind Kudelka's horror-tinged westernization? Well, Kikuta just created, wrote, produced, directed the game, and its plethora of fully motion-captured cutscenes, oh, and also the FMVs, while also composing the game's soundtrack. And all of these things are superb, drenched in atmosphere, and are in many ways were and still are well ahead of their time. Care to guess what was one of the few parts of Kudelka that Kikuta said in interviews he wasn't directly involved with? The combat. It's not bad per se, but in a game as convention breaking as Kudelka, it sticks out like a sore thumb. I do enjoy it though. Well, I should clarify that what I actually like about it isn't the passable and somewhat generic combat itself, but rather the way Kudelka handles character progression. The game gives you all the tools you need to survive the horrors of the night. 
but it is up to you to choose how. Instead of leveling up and having the game auto-level the character's skills and attributes down a predetermined path, Kudelka instead allows you to spread their attribute points however you like, effectively letting you run everything from a party of all mages, to all sword-wielding melee fighters, or pistol-slinging gunmen. Topping things off is the way weapon and spell mastery works, with subsequent levels granting damage bonuses and the chance to land extra hits. Each attribute and skill point not only has a tangible impact on combat, but is also tied to another, and both must be leveled in tandem to achieve maximum efficiency. It is still a far cry from the caliber of freedom and complexity Western CRPGs were offering at the same time over on the PC, but when compared to its fellow console contemporaries, Kudelka is leaps and bounds beyond all but an elite few. My sole gripe I have with the battle system outside of its simplicity as a tactics combat game is just how easy it is to break. Even a small amount of grinding can massively overpower your characters, but I choose to see this minor flaw as a double-edged sword. Since a common criticism of JRPGs as a genre is their need to grind for hours and hours. Kudelka might be 4 discs long, but the game only clocks in at around the 13 hour mark. That, coupled with the ease at which you can grind to the appropriate level, makes the game and story move at a very brisk pace, where sometimes you will walk from a cutscene into a boss fight, into another boss fight, into a save room, into another cutscene, into another boss fight, and then right on in to the next disc. Breaking up this crazed boss rush is a handful of welcome puzzles, along with a few powerful secret items to keep an eye out for, like the pendant. And trust me, you're going to want to find the pendant, because it unlocks an ending. I love everything about Kudelka, from its grainy pre-rendered backgrounds, to the slightly compressed audio and sound effects, to the functional yet inelegant menus, all of it positively screams late 90s JRPG, and I love and adore every second of it. But it is not all jank, however. Kudelka was one of the few games of its era to not only be fully voiced, but also one of the rare Japanese games ever to prioritize its English dub over the Japanese. This, along with the stellar performances and superb script penned by Kikuta, elevates Kudelka from a fun and interesting game to an all-time classic. Just listen to this early scene that takes place shortly after the party meets. Where all have gone, and all must go, to be the nothing that I was. I are born to life and living woe. Lord Byron, no? I am not an admirer of his. In the first place, his poetry is unrefined. And who gave you the right to judge the refinement of poetry? Poetry should delve into the depths of the souls of the faithful. And others. It should inspire the soul as to Alexander Pope or George Herbert. If they have the power to do away with these evil spirits, I'd choose anyone. Even that dear old carpenter's son. Blasphemous! So <laughs> Pagan! How dare you utter such words of sin? To seek help from someone you've never met before is ridiculous, especially when people are dying from hunger every single day in London. Oh, they're all filthy anymore, little beggars that deserve to die. Heaven is... That doesn't sound like a demonic spirit to me. The noise is coming from that building over there. In that brief scene, we not only have allusions to Lord Byron and Christ, but also insight into all three of our main characters' personalities. Up until this point in the story, we've assumed Edward is just an uneducated thief, until he suddenly starts quoting poetry. James interrupts with his pompous and self-righteous remarks, reinforcing his snobbishness, and Kudelka points out his hubris. With her thinly veiled insults towards God, causing shock and revulsion in both James and Edward. Who, at this point in the story, are kind of unsure of her, and they both think she's a little crazy. The scene also pushes the game's main narrative forward, when some unknown person opens fire on them from the adjacent building. 
Michael Bradbury and Scott Larson are excellent as Edward and James respectively, but it is the darkly playful performance of Vivian Bakta as Kudelka that ties it all together. I don't know about you, but I've seen major Hollywood movies with worse acting and pacing. I've read fucking books with shittier writing and character development, and I've played modern video games with worse still. Kudelka. Both the game and the woman are flawed masterpieces. The game is an atmospheric and richly textured jaunt not only through a haunted manner, but also the depths of human depravity. Kudelka is best described as a game of duality. It is as grim as it is charming, as archaic as it is modern, as elegant as it is obtuse. Design-wise, the game is caught between two worlds, East and West, horror and role-playing. Aberstrength Abbey itself is both an austere house of God and an opulent manner of sin and debauchery. A holy site for both Christians and pagans, Kudelka herself is torn between the world of the living and the dead. Edward is an honorable thief, James a pious sinner. Some people say that Kudelka isn't a good game, that it is just unique, and they are both wrong and right. Kudelka is unlike any other game ever made, even when compared to its own sequels, which, tragically, became filled with more and more anime nonsense after Kikuta left Saknoth. But Kudelka is more than just unique, it is also an, an amazing game, a masterclass in video game writing and tone, a potent brew of spooks and stats, and a wonderful example of what Eastern and Western video games can learn from each other. So, if you are a fan of JRPGs or survival horror, you owe it to yourself to play it. There is nothing else quite like it. But there's an issue. Kudelka didn't exactly sell well when it came out, and the game was never ported or remastered or even put up on PSN or Steam. So that means you have two options. You can either find a way to play it, or you can buy a physical copy. Good luck.